If you're considering buying another lawnmower this spring, I consider getting something used, mainly because the price of a new mower is like new car prices from last year, which was absolutely insane. Now, about three years ago, you could have bought a simple mower for around $199, but right now, that same mower is almost $330. So I would like to make a recommendation then. If you need to buy another mower, why not get a used one, and if you consider it, why not buy a Honda then? In today's video, we're going to look at this Honda lawnmower, and the problem is that it's kind of tough to start. Now, I've already made a video about this mower, and if you want to see that video, there should be a link to it at the top of the screen or at the end of the video. And I'm just going to use the video as a background while I talk about why you should consider getting a Honda lawnmower. And I also want to talk about some of the issues that other people have with them. So I've been working on small engines for about a decade now. And in that time, I've learned quite a bit about lawnmowers. Nothing too exciting, but it can be kind of interesting. The biggest thing I've learned so far is that a little bit of maintenance can help that mower go a long way. And if you get a good mower, it'll go even further. Now this doesn't just apply to Honda stuff, I've gotten plenty of comments from people telling me they have a mower from decades ago that still works just as good as the day they first got it home. What that tells me is that quality can be found right here in this country and you don't have to have it built by the cheapest bidder overseas in a country where they don't have the same values and freedoms as we do. Now mind you, things have changed in recent times but I'm not here to talk about that and that's better left to a different podcast. I'm not really sure what's happened in the last 50 plus years, but things have changed. It used to be that appliances, cars, TVs, and equipment used to be made to last as long as humanly possible, and aside from some sort of accident, and if they were taken care of, could possibly last a very long time. Nowadays, some of the items I just mentioned might only last a handful of years before they start to have issues. I'm not talking about a complete failure, but they might start to develop strange issues that makes them difficult to use, if not impossible to use. The only thing I could come up with was that companies have changed their strategies on how they make their money. These companies don't want to make money on parts and service anymore and instead are focusing only on sales. At least that's what I'm seeing. But you might see something completely different. So if your revenue comes from sales, that means you can't have the items you make last decades. You need them to last a handful of years and then the consumers will come back to the stores and buy another product from you. But there's just one huge problem with that strategy. Now, if you had a mower that was 15 years old and because of an unfortunate accident had to be replaced with a newer version, how long do you think your new mower should last? Hopefully just as long as the last one, right? But what happens is that only three years later, it fails in the worst possible way. So what might happen is that the consumer might change brands to one they haven't tried yet. So unfortunately, you risk losing a customer who could have potentially led their children to the same brand. So you risk losing not only the initial customer, but also future customers as well. So how do you get around this? Well, that's pretty simple. You buy out the competition. That means even if they move away from a Troy built mower and go over to a Craftsman, it won't matter because the same corporation owns that one as well. And eventually, after a few more years, there's a good chance they'll acquire the next brand as well. Eventually, it won't matter at all which brand you buy. So how do you get around this issue? Try picking a brand that hasn't been consumed by the larger one. Now, I'm not against big business, but I am against some of their ideals and goals. And part of that is trying to get them more power and money. So here's what I do instead. Now, whatever brand of mower or any type of equipment you have, try and take care of it the best you can. That way you get the most for your investment. Don't worry, there's almost no way of making sure that mower you have is going to last 100 years. So it will eventually break down and that means that you can then finally break down and buy something new. But until then, I'm going to try and do my best to not have to buy a new mower every few years. Now you can go buy a new mower if you really want to, but if you're able to do that, you must make more money than you can spend. I know I haven't started to talk about Honda mowers just yet, but give me a minute while I make a point. So how do you keep that engine from expiring so soon? It's pretty simple. Use good quality gasoline, take the proper steps for winter storage, and finally change the oil once a year. Just pick a day of the year to make that happen. Maybe try changing it on your birthday or on the holiday of your choice. For me, the first cut of the year works best, but you can obviously do more to help it along. But those are just the basics and it works on almost every brand. However, some are better than others.
So if it's so easy to do, why do so many people get it wrong then? Now, without trying to be quite so rude or mean, the simple answer is laziness. And the second answer would be knowledge. Now, most people do not want to check the oil and most people do not want to do an oil change, but that goes along with knowledge as well. If they only knew how easy it was and what the impact would be on their mowers and more importantly, their money, I think more consumers would take better care of it. Okay, now that we've got that out of the way, let's talk about Honda. Now, I know Honda is viewed as an overseas company, but Honda has factories here in the U.S. That means they employ people that live here in the community. So, yes, the company is based overseas, but they're a part of this country as well. So, here's the best part. Honda not only makes vehicles, but they make other power equipment like motorcycles and ATVs, but also marine equipment, and they're also involved with aviation. Basically, they're more than just a lawnmower and car company and have been around for a very long time, so they have a lot at stake. So here's the best part where I address some of the issues viewers have brought to my attention about owning and using a Honda mower. The most common complaint I've heard all relate to the long bolts that go through the airbox, the carb, and the choke bypass if the engine is new enough to have one of those. The complaint is that it's a hassle having to hold everything mostly together while inserting these long bolts, and for the most part, I agree with you. I also find them to be quite frustrating at times, but if that's the best complaint you have for it, I think you're being a bit picky. So hear me out for a second. If you wanted to have an item that's connected to another item and there was air and gasoline going between them, then using gaskets and two bolts makes sense, right? Especially if you didn't want them to come apart or leak. Now the argument is that other brands are much easier to deal with. Okay, let's talk about how the competition does it then. Let's start with Kohler. They practically use the same style except they use studs. They apparently realize the advantage of using long fasteners along with gaskets. Now keep in mind this is just as cumbersome because to remove the carb you have to remove at least one of the studs, which for some could be very difficult to do. So this one may not be a fair comparison as far as easy goes. So what about other brands then? Now Tecumseh is long gone but it's still a fair comparison and that's because their engines are still around. Now their carbs are bolted to an intake pipe with two bolts and sealed with a gasket. Still cumbersome but it works. So what about another brand then? How about a two stroke lawn boy? Guess what, they're just as bad as Honda's. Two long bolts that have to be lined up with the carb. Now at this point I should stop using long dead companies because someone could use that fact against this argument. So what about the overseas engines on some of the newer Cub Cadet mowers? Well guess what, they're just like Kohler engines. So what about the really cheap overseas engines on PowerSmart mowers then? I hate to tell you but they use studs and nuts. It seems that your complaint might revolve around you wanting it to be easy like the cheesiest one on the market right now. I'm of course talking about Briggs. Now Briggs uses an o-ring to seal the carb to the intake pipe and the carb is held in place with two bolts and that's it. Now you are right, this is so simple and easy and it works, but if it works so well then why don't other companies use a variation of that design that won't fringe on patents? Easy, because nuts, bolts, and gaskets have been used for a very long time and just work. As for Honda, well, suck it up and just get used to it. So what's another complaint then? Some have complained that they are hard to start. My answer to that one is, how old is your engine and has the valve lash been inspected? And if so, have you tried to replace the carb? One of the only other issues viewers have brought up was the drive system on these mowers and they are correct. If you happen to get the hydrostatic transmission on these, you'll either love them or hate them but only after they fail. The hydro is so expensive on these that I typically tell people not to get them and the reason is most are not aware on how to take care of them. And when they do fail, they are expensive to fix. However, if you get one with the regular one speed or the three speed, and the best option, in my opinion, is the variable speed, that's all you need, then you shouldn't have to worry about it. So here's the deal. I can never really judge a mower completely unless I was able to buy the mower brand new and take the steps to care for it. Only then can I truly say that I blame the manufacturers and they're out to get us, the consumers. 
but since I've only ever bought one mower brand new in the box, I try not to be too critical about them. Now that's hard to believe since that's what it seems like I'm doing right now, but having an opinion on a product and scrutinizing it isn't the same. So if you can get a Honda mower for cheap, get it. Try it out and see if you like it. And if you don't like it, that's perfectly fine. Just remember, they're not something magical. They're just a machine and they're going to have some issues just like other machines on the market. Now, some issues you may never see while others will be staring right at you. So my question is, if I could give you a fully serviced used Honda mower that was given away for whatever reason to try out for a whole season, gasoline and all, would you give it a chance to change your mind? And if not, then why not? Are you that against trying out something new that you won't even give it a chance? Thank you for watching. I really do appreciate your time here. Please feel free to ask me any questions about this project or about your own projects. And I hope to see you in the next video.